to my channel. My name is Dr. Cassandra. I have a PhD in vineyard and wine science and on this channel I talk about what it's like to live and work in wine country. So the rainy season is upon us here in Northern California and I had a pretty cozy weekend at home doing something that I love which is baking. I haven't done any baking in a while and I had one of my friends and her young son over to help me with the baking. So I actually prepared three different types of cookie dough for us and one of them was a sugar cookie um, and then I had two gluten-free cookies, uh, classic peanut butter, and also kind of a recipe that I was developing, and it's a cherry chocolate chip cookie. Um, and then to go with our cookies, I made us some mulled wine, and I'm going to teach you how to make all three recipes and also the mulled wine recipe. So if you want to learn how I did that, please keep watching. This uh, recipe for a chocolate chip and cherry cookie is adapted from the website Joyful Belly. For this you'll need a quarter cup of almond meal, a quarter cup of dried cherries, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of ground cardamom, a third of a cup of uh, semi-sweet chocolate chips, an egg, a half a cup of butter, which is one stick, a half a teaspoon of salt, a cup of gluten-free flour, and the one that I'm using is Bob's Red Mill 1 to 1 baking flour, um, a half a cup of milk, a teaspoon of vanilla, and, um, and a half a cup of sugar. So here is cookie recipe number one. As with most cookie recipes, I started creaming the room temperature unsalted butter with the sugar. slowly increasing the speed of the mixer and I think it's a good practice to use a rubber spatula to make sure the ingredients are smoothly mixed. Now I'm adding the egg and the milk and I did manage to get some of it on the side of the bowl. I'm also adding the vanilla extract. Next is the gluten-free flour and the almond meal salt and the uh, cardamom. So I'm increasing the speed slowly. I ultimately decided to add another quarter cup of the gluten-free flour because the uh, batter was kind of wet. I folded in the chocolate chips and the dried cherries and set the batter in the fridge to chill until I was ready to bake. The next cookie is a classic peanut butter cookie, but I've made it gluten-free, and I'm using the recipe from this 1969 copy of the Betty Crocker cookbook. And it's this one. So my only alteration is just using that Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one, um, baking flour. So for this recipe, I'm using a stick of butter, so that's half a cup. Um, a half a cup of peanut butter, and this is one that only has peanuts and salt, so there's no other additives. Um, I have a half a cup of sugar. Um, it lo it's a, looks like a bad measurement, but I'm running out of measuring cups, so I just put half a cup of sugar into the cup. Um, and then I need a half a cup of brown sugar, one egg, one and quarter cups of that baking flour. Um, three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm starting out by creaming the room temperature softened butter with the peanut butter. I'll now add the regular sugar and the brown sugar. Uh, creaming the butter and sugar is pretty normal for most cookie recipes. And it's really important to have the butter at room temperature to uh, create a nice base for the cookies. And then I'll add the egg, and it will look a little curdled, but don't panic when you see this, that's normal. And once you add the flour, things will start coming together. Um, and then here comes the flour, and uh, for this next step, be careful on your speed or the flour will go everywhere. 
The next cookie recipe is a good old fashioned cut out sugar cookie. So this one's not gonna be gluten free. I've never tried to make a gluten free sugar cookie before. So I think that's something to experiment with in the future. Anyway, this came from the same Betty Crocker cookbook. You'll need two and a half cups of all purpose flour, two eggs, one cup of sugar, a teaspoon of baking soda, a stick and a half of butter, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract or a half a teaspoon of lemon extract. Anyway, let's start with creaming the butter and sugar and then add the eggs and then we add the dry ingredients and we let the dough sit in the fridge for about an hour. Again with the room temperature butter and uh, dancing to Lizzo helps with making cookies. I creamed it with the sugar and the egg like I did with the last couple of recipes and the butter aroma was so incredible um, and they smelled really good while they baked as well and again scraping down the bottom of the bowl to make sure everything is mixed well and you can see that curdled effect I was telling you about that's the part that you don't panic about. So blending it some more before I start adding the dry ingredients. So I've got, um, well actually vanilla and um, the flour, the regular flour. And I realized that I needed salt instead of baking soda and I'm so glad I did. Um, I don't know if the effect would be huge by adding baking soda instead, but uh, I don't want to find out. And then finally here comes the flour. Um, I just used the edge of the bag to help me level it. I can't say I did a particularly good job. Sorry, Mom. But um, everything turned out fine. <laughs> so it's always good to try to level it out with the back of the knife like a, like a real baker. Now I'm gonna to put together a mold wine for me and my friend. So when it comes to making a mold wine, I think it's best to choose a very fruity red wine. Some good options are Pinot Noir, um, also Grenache or Syrah. But um, it's okay for you to use whatever kind of wine you like. I just think uh, a lower price point is a good idea since you're gonna be adding different flavorants. So um, I have the 2018 Dana Gauche Pinot Noir from Russian River Valley, and this was a gift. The reason why you would want to choose a wine that's kind of fruity and not too tannic, and tannic means that it kind of dries your mouth out, is because as you warm up the wine, that tannic feeling is, the astringent feeling is actually going to increase. So. That's um, not a very comfortable sensation. The average bottle of wine is 750 milliliters, and I have these loin spices from Whole Foods, and this is enough for two gallons, and 750 milliliters is equivalent to about 0.2 gallons, so I'm going to add, um, th that's about a tenth of this mix, so that equates to about a teaspoon. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of emollient spices into one of these loose leaf tea bags that I got from the Daiso store. Um, and then uh, to follow the recipe on the emollient spice container, I'm only going to add two tablespoons of brown sugar. And then just kind of my own special touches, I'm going to use a cinnamon stick. I like to use whole spices as opposed to powdered spices because I think the powdered spices make the mold wine a little murky. Um, I'm also gonna add a strip of orange peel and I'm gonna stud the orange peel with whole cloves. So let's get to making our mold wine.
enjoyed learning the cookie recipes and also the mulled wine recipe, I have a mug of it right here. And it's the perfect way to end a rainy evening. And I know many people will not be having lots of holiday parties this year, but if you do get together, I hope you utilize some of these recipes. And I would love to hear below in the comment section um, if you use any of these recipes. And I also have a couple of cookies. Uh, these are the gluten-free ones, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. The peanut butter ones are kind of on the crispy, crunchy side, which I like. And the chocolate chip cherry ones, they're kind of cakey, uh, chewy. And um, it was kind of a recipe that I formulated myself, and sometimes that can go horribly wrong. But I'm really pleased with this one. And... Um, each recipe made at least a dozen cookies, and I made them kind of on the larger side. That being said, season's greetings, and cheers from wine country.